Hello and welcome back to my vlog. This is video number 63 and in today's video I'm going to get to the point and stay on point on the topic of how to develop a growth mindset. So a growth mindset is something that even less than a year ago to me was completely alien. I didn't really understand it. I didn't fully perceive the benefits of being in that mindset to grow, whether it's on a physical basis, mental basis, learning stuff, being able to do stuff, whatever. Um, but as you progress through life, it is definitely something very important to, um, to grasp if, if you want to improve yourself in any way, shape or form. So, um, what I've got here are a few notes um, from things that I've learned in the last two or three months, especially, um, that have helped me develop my own mindset to be able to learn things and do things better, etc. Um, and in turn, that obviously develops you as a person, professionally, personally, physically, mentally, every conceivable way depending on what you focus on for me it is definitely a bit of an all-rounder because <clears throat> obviously I do spend a lot of time in the gym uh, physically improving myself I now spend a lot of time reading mentally improving myself um, well I say mentally educationally if that's the right word um, I should be meditating a bit more to mentally improve myself um, and in turn, all of it just helps develop you as a person as well. So, um, I was going to say step number one. It's not step number one. These are not steps at all. Uh, these can be, these are just point, pointers, um, little tidbits of advice, uh, little cues for remembering what to do in certain situations. Uh, like if you're stuck with a challenge, you're lost for what to do, a cue like this might just kind of trigger a certain response and then you carry on with it. Uh, so number one, actually I shouldn't even number these, but number one, but the first one on the list is to acknowledge imperfections. Now this is important because your imperfections or a collation of your imperfections is what leads to your weakest points so if you can acknowledge your imperfections or identify them at least and start working on those improve improving improving on your imperfections then you'll become better at what it is that you do in general so a very common question that i get asked in the gym is um regarding like lifting heavy weights, especially when it comes to doing squats, etc. Uh, so there's a few people that ask me how I can squat as heavy as I do. And <clears throat> there was a point where I was stuck at a certain barrier, not being able to squat heavier than that. And the most important thing I did, the most helpful thing I did was I slowed the squat right down, slowed the exercise right down. This can be any exercise, especially compound moves. Slow the exercise right down and feel, like physically think what the body's doing. Feel where the weakest points are. And for me in particular, it was um, knee strength and ankle flexibility. So then I um, researched how to improve those two points those two parts, those two aspects, and spent several weeks just working on knee strength and ankle mobility, I suppose, mobility, flexibility. And when I went back to doing squats, I was able to beat my previous personal best or personal record by 20 or 30 kilos in a single session. So, yeah, when you acknowledge your imperfections and work, focus on improving them and making them not imperfections then that's like I said there's not really a step but that's kind of step one to being a better you uh, second on the list is which ties in nicely from 
acknowledging your imperfections because it forces you how to learn to cope with or deal with some things like I said I had to go and research how to fix my knees essentially um, second on the list is to cultivate a passion for learning so this is one of the toughest things I found um, because I've always perceived learning to be something that you only do at school or university or college or you know times like that when you're just being talked at from a person of authority supposed authority and as as everyone should know by now like the education system is completely flawed it it is not in the education system's interest to educate you to your best ability they are just purely following a, a curriculum they just try and get words in your head that you can then later transfer those words onto a piece of paper called an exam to make the school look good it doesn't actually teach you anything <clears throat> so cultivating a passion for learning is it has to be driven from within like I said you have to identify your weaknesses learn how to improve them and then work on improving them and then you have to identify other things that you want to be better at other things that you want to learn um, and know more about and then go research those and educate yourself on those and the best thing best place to do that is well you've got youtube for instance there's an abundance and by abundance i mean billions of videos um there are say millions of educational videos on their um books i've found my my best resource is books and they are so cheap if you go to a charity bookshop for instance um i've been picking up books for anything between one and four pounds ago and the way i see it is if i can just learn one thing from every book i read that is a good cheap education i don't mean cheap as in like it's not worth it cheap as in bang for buck there's a lot of education to be had so if you spend say two or three pounds on a book and you learn one thing from it like no college course is gonna teach you one thing for two or three pounds you're gonna have to spend a whole at least like a term's tuition and attend many many classes and do loads of coursework and then if you're lucky you might learn something or develop a new thought pattern or whatever so yeah get to grips with learning and educating yourself <clears throat> now the next point again ties into the previous one um the process of educating yourself so in doing that you're not going to see results straight away usually the results can be months or even years down the line so the next point is to reward efforts not achievements and that's important because that kind of keeps the inspiration and the motivation boosted whilst um, improving yourself because let's think about it. if you're only going to reward 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 your achievements then you're only going to be patting yourself on the back every time you actually finish or complete something which is bullshit because right up until that point you're going to be struggling to keep up the effort the whole way till you finish it whereas if you actually reward your efforts instead then you know it it's just more inspirational more motivational so um and there's no there's no real there's no single answer for how to reward efforts. It can be something as simple as if you are if you pick up a book that you want to read, you can perhaps say to yourself something like, okay, for every five pages I read, I'll have a um, five-minute break listening to music or watching a, um, a video or, you know, anything like that. Um, if you're on a diet, this is the worst example ever, but having a cheat day, um, usually the body does reward it, does reward you for it, as long as you don't have multiple cheat days in a row, that's what usually sends you on the spiral, um, but if, like, say, once a week or once a fortnight, you just go all out, doesn't, so cheat day is a bit of a, it's a bit of a con word, but, um, more so a cheat meal, you know, 
a lot of people think, oh, if you're on a diet, you shouldn't be enjoying food at all. That's bullshit. If you're on a diet, you should be enjoying food. Because if you're not enjoying food, if you're not enjoying food, then you're going to fail a diet. But, you know, that's a whole different topic altogether. Next point, which does not tie in with any of the previous ones. Um, this is more an external factors based point, and it is to learn from criticism. Now, a lot of people, when they get criticised, they take it as something offensive. They get offended by it, and they put themselves down, and that's the wrong way to look at it, because criticism can be very helpful. It it's another person's way of identifying a weakness that you probably haven't identified yourself. You know, when you do receive criticism in whatever you do, like if you're a sports person and someone says to you, oh, you, not whatever you did over there, you could do with improving that or that's crack or whatever, you know, work on that. Or if you're, say you're, a, um, I don't know, some sort of, sort of a musician and you're playing piano or something and someone says, oh yeah, you could be doing this better. Like, you know, don't take it as offensive. Take it in and see whether you can improve it. Unless the other person's wrong and you know that intrinsically, then so be it. But yeah, um, learning from criticism goes vaguely <coughs> hand in hand with, oh, <laughs> goes vaguely hand in hand with acknowledging imperfections. It's just that, Criticism from external factors is the recognition of imperfections from a third eye view, third person view, essentially. Um, then also tied in with rewarding efforts over achievements is the importance of focusing on growth rather than speed. And this can be summed up as have a little patience or exercise patience. Now, a lot of people, when they start a journey on something, especially in the gym, I've seen it quite a lot in the gym, um, or when people learn, say, like programming languages or anything technical, they expect to know it all or be better at whatever it is that they're practicing after, say, just one month. It doesn't happen like that. When people have asked me in the gym, how can I do certain exercises so well? Um, you know, what's the secret? I say to them, well, you know, once you've done a thousand reps or once you've done this for a thousand days, then you'll know. You can't just walk into something, try it out for a month and expect to be your best self at that. Okay, yeah, some people can do that, but you know, average Joe ain't going to happen. So, yeah, focus on the growth rather than speed and just know that every time you put in effort towards a goal, you are getting one step closer to being better at it. So, yeah. Um, and then the final point that I've got here is to embrace change. A lot of people are seemingly afraid of change whatever their change may be whether it's internal external or anything like that or something that they have to forcibly change to become a better self um yeah just embrace it see that change as a as the first step in a new direction if need be um not all new directions are good not all new directions are bad but the only way you're going to find out is take that first step, take a few more, try it out and see how it goes. There are some things that I've done in the past, especially professionally wise, like work wise, that I thought would be great and they've turned out to be complete dog shit. There have been things that I've done where I've not put enough effort into it and thought, yeah, it's, it's not going to pan out to be anything. And then in retrospect, I've looked back and thought, shit, I could have really been enjoying that had I just put in more effort. So, yeah, change is important and you have to embrace it. You don't necessarily have to stick with a change, but try everything at least. And then finally, I've got a point here which um, kind of sums up 
Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacle is the Way. Well, actually, it doesn't sum it up, but it's my takeaway from that book. Like I said, if if every book I read can teach me one thing, I'll be happy with it. Um, that book told me that every challenge you face, you should look to turn it into an opportunity. That opportunity can be um, the opportunity to learn something new, to try something new, to go somewhere new, um, to do something you haven't done or even considered before, or maybe even meet some new people or try a new venture, anything like that, or adventure, either way. Yeah, when, when a challenge or when you're faced with a challenge, don't dismiss it straight away. Look into it a bit more, research it a bit, take the first step and, you know, just step through the door, metaphorically speaking, and see what's on offer. Because, you know, there's nothing worse than, there's nothing worse than looking back at something and regretting not having done it when you had the opportunity go, opportunity to go and do it. Because... Not all opportunities come back around a second time. So that's a very important thing to remember. Oh, out of breath now. Like I said, I was trying to keep that very much on point. Um, I was trying to keep it under 10 minutes as well, but that didn't happen. Anyway, that's been video number 63. Um, I've been me. This is what I've learned. I hope you've taken away something from it as well. Um, if any of the points you want a clearer explanation on it, you know, leave a comment down below. Ask any questions. I don't mind. Don't mind answering. If you want to know what which of these parts I've learned from whatever book, just ask the question. I will give you the book titles. Simple as that. Anyway, until tomorrow. It's sunny, it's not really sunny today, but if the sun's out where you are, go and enjoy it. I will see you then.